Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make meringue mushrooms and this is what they look like. These are just too cute. They are really nice and sweet, yet the texture is really crisp and just seems to melt in your mouth. So the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And then you will need two baking sheets. Line your baking sheets with parchment paper. And we are going to bake the two sheets at one time. So have your oven racks in the top and bottom third of your oven. Now, a meringue mushroom, as you can see here, has two parts. We have the mushroom cap and then we have the mushroom stem. So we're gonna to have to pipe. On one sheet, I pipe the caps, and on the other sheet, I pipe the uh, stems. So if you want to have your meringue mushrooms all the same size, which I have done, um, then what you wanna do is make like a template. So what I've done is take a, my piece of parchment paper and then take a two inch, that's five centimeter uh, cookie cutter, and then I just take a felt marker and just draw out my uh, round. So I've got four across, six down, so, because this recipe makes about 24 two inch, uh, five centimeter um, mushrooms. So that's what I do. And then on the other sheet, we're going to uh, pipe the stamps. Now, once you do your, um, make your rounds, turn that upside down because you don't want the uh, pen marks on the top. And so, Meringue mushrooms, meringue, really two ingredients, egg whites, sugar. And it's amazing what you get from that. So you will need uh, three large egg whites. That would be 90 grams. And you want them at room temperature. So I find, you know, separate your eggs and then cover your egg whites. Uh, for, and it usually takes about, you know, maybe a half an hour at room temperature to warm them up. And then if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your whisk attachment or you can just use a hand mixer for this so uh, take your egg whites let's put them in the bowl and make sure whenever you're um, making a meringue make sure that your bowl is really clean you don't want any uh, grease on the inside because that way your meringue will not whip to its like as as to its full height so make sure everything's clean and then I'm going to add just a quarter of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That kind of stabilizes our egg whites. Now you don't have to um, add that. I know some people have a hard time finding it. Normally you can find it on the baking aisle with all the spices, but you could just leave it out or you could add just a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon juice for that. And then what I'm gonna do is just to, to break up my uh, egg whites, I'm just gonna, Give it a quick whisk. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to beat my uh, egg whites on like medium, low, medium speed. You don't want it at high speed at this point. We want to do this slowly. We want to, whoop, sure that's attached. Um, I'm going to beat this on medium, low speed until soft peaks form. So that'll be several minutes. Be patient. <laughs> okay, so I think that looks pretty good. As you can see, it's nice and foamy. We're just starting to get a little bit of peaks that kind of just dissolve right back down. So at this point, we are going to start adding our sugar. I like to use super fine sugar because it dissolves faster and easier into our egg whites. So you will need, um, this is very good. When we're making, there's two types of meringue. There's a soft meringue, that's kind of like what you put on the top of a lemon meringue pie. And this is more of a hard meringue. So the amount of sugar varies depend, you know, depending what type of meringue. For this, I'm using three large egg whites, which is 90 grams. So if you have a scale, again, you know how I love a scale, weigh your egg whites because really what we want is the weight of our egg whites, we want to use double the amount of sugar. So if you have 90 grams of egg whites, you use 180 grams of sugar. 
So if you don't have a scale, what, you know, we're going to be approximate here because it's not, doesn't have to be that precise. So what you want to use is about three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of superfine sugar. You can buy superfine sugar, white sugar, uh, although if you live in the States, it tends to be a little expensive. So what I do is just take 180 grams or three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of granulated white sugar. Just throw it into your food processor and process it for about, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. And then it gets, then the, the granules will get little, tiny and you have super fine white sugar. So that's what I'm using here. So what we're gonna do at this point, once your egg whites are like this, is I'm gonna add, you know, a big, uh, big spoonful of sugar and put that in there. And then we're going to start beating this. We're gonna add the sugar gradually because we want the sugar to dissolve before we add more. And we're gonna now turn our speed to high. So I'm gonna turn it to high, and I want this really to dissolve in there and get the meringues start to get thick. So I'm probably a minute or two, and then I'll show you um, what that looks like. Okay, so I've been beating that a minute or two, and I beat the first amount of sugar until when it's beating, I can start to see the tracks of my whisk in the meringue, as you can see here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, at a, like a spoonful at a time, I'm gonna have my mixer at high speed and gradually add the sugar. The reason you do that is you add a bit and let that dissolve in and then you add a little more and a little more and you just keep doing that until our meringue is really nice and fluffy and glossy and that is, and then there is a test I'm going to show you to make sure that all that sugar is dissolved, and I'll show you that in a bit. But what I'm going to do now is just kind of just go around your bowl and throw in some of that sugar. I'm going to beat that a little bit, and then add a little more and a little more, and until it's all done. Okay, now. You can see, doesn't that look gorgeous? Nice and shiny, glossy, really nice, stiff meringue. And periodically when you're beating in that sugar, you may want to just um, stop the mixer and scrape down the sides because the sugar de does tend to accumulate around the outside. And we want to make sure that, that all that sugar has dissolved into our meringue, which that is what we need to do because it looks fantastic. But one test you want to do to make sure that that meringue or that sugar is completely dissolved is to just take a little and rub it between your fingers. It should feel really nice and smooth. If it, there's a little bit of graininess, and I actually feel a little bit, then I need to beat it a little longer. I'm just going to beat it on like medium high just to make sure that sugar is all dissolved. And that's one of the reasons why we're using super fine sugar, because it, it does dissolve a little quicker, a little easier into the egg whites with that uh, finer grain. So I'm just going to beat this just a little more, and then I'll test it, and then uh, we're done on meringue. Okay, so I'm, as you can see, I'm just going to, that's what you're looking for, that nice stiff peak. So I'm just going to run. That's good. Nice and smooth between my fingers. So now, um, if you want, I, I love vanilla. <laughs> if you watch many videos, you know I like vanilla. So I'm going to add one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract to this just for flavoring. You can leave it out. You could add like maybe uh, peppermint or orange or lemon or something else, a little bit of or almond extract if you would want that. And I'm just going to beat that in. And we're done. Isn't, I mean, it, to me, I'm always amazed how you can just take egg whites and sugar and make something so gorgeous. So now what we're going to do is we are going to pipe our caps and our stems for our mushrooms. So you will need a piping bag, 
I'm using a pretty large one here. We got a lot of meringue. And then I'm using a tip. I'm using a plain tip. This is about a third of an inch, which is about eight millimeters. So that's what you're looking for. And then just pop that in there. And then I just like to take my bag and then just stick that in so then the meringue doesn't come out, although it's pretty thick, so I don't have a problem with that. Now you can um, turn down the top. If, you, if you're new to this, what you may want to do is just put the whole bag into a large cup and then it's stable. But because I'm using such a large bag, I can just hold it in my hand. And then I'm not taking all the meringue at once. I like to you know, work with about half at a time. So just put that in there. Oh, nice and stiff and glossy. Now you could use this meringue to pipe other shapes. So you want it to. So we're going to take that and then we want to try to get all the air. We don't want any air pockets, although it has been known to happen. So just press that. What you can do too is just take like a, a scraper and just kind of scrape it down that way. Gets it a little cleaner. Get all that air out and then if you're new to piping don't worry because the thing is if you don't get the shape right you can just kind of um, take it off and try again and they don't have to be perfect anyways so I got that down now what I like to do make sure it comes right down see if I can get there okay and then you twist your bag and hold it like that. And then the other hand is a guide. But first, what I like to do is take a little meringue and just put like some dot to act as a glue to hold your paper down. Because there's nothing worse than you're kind of piping and your, your parchment paper's moving around on you. So that just acts like a glue. Do it on the other sheet. Now this makes, like I said, about 24 two inch, five centimeter mushrooms. So, I mean, really you can scale this recipe up or down. Proportions are, are pretty easy to do that. So now we, as I said, get this hand as guide and this hand and then use that. So what I'm doing is straight down and I've got my nice guide template there. So I'm just gonna Pipe straight down, even pressure to about the size I want, and then like that. And that's all you do. Even pressure, and stop the pressure, and you're done. Okay, so I'm just going to do, how many I got here? Um, 16 because I realize as I'm piping these, I'm making them quite big and tall. So um, I want to make sure I got enough of the uh, stems. So I'm going to pipe my stems first and then I'll see if I can make any more um, the caps. So for stems, really, as you know, mushrooms can, they can be fat. The stems can be like short and fat or tall and thin. So we're really whatever you like. I like mine um, pretty fat and not too tall. If you make them really skinny and tall, there's a tendency for them to fall over as they bake. So always make more stems than you have caps, just to make sure. So again, you're just even pressure, building it up slowly. Whoop, a layer there. Okay, so I've got the uh, 16. I'm going to make a few more. And then I'm going to pipe a few more caps. Normally you want your um, caps like about two inches wide, five centimeter, by about one inch high, two and a half centimeter. I think I might have 
made mine a little bigger than that, but that's okay. So I'm going to get, looks like I'm going to get about 20. Which is, that's okay. So I'm just going to make sure I have enough stems. Okay. So now, um, as you can see, I got little tips on my meringues. So I want to get rid of that. So just have a little water and lightly, not just get your finger damp. And then you can just press down, get rid of those little tips and smooth out the tops. Okay, so that's it. I, there is tips on my stems. I'm not going to worry about that because we're going to kind of seal them together so it doesn't matter. Now, meringues, baking meringues, low and slow. We have a, our oven is pretty low and you want to, because what we're really doing is just drying out those meringues. So we want to do it slowly. You don't want to do it at a high temperature because then it would happen quickly, but your meringues would brown and we don't want them. We want them to stay pretty white. So low and slow. Now, humidity, I, I, I find that a big factor. When I lived in, in a, uh, a place that had low humidity, I had no problem making meringue. I find I'm a little meringue challenged now because I live by the ocean. Like today, I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, over a little 60 to 65 percent humidity in my kitchen. So, you know, it's going to take longer for me to make my, for my meringues to bake than somebody that has, uh, is in a climate where the, the humidity is low. So I am going to give you a bit of a range of the baking time here. Um, it can be maybe an hour, an hour and a quarter. I find with, with where I live, at least an hour and a half. And then, so you kind of go, well, how do I know? How you know your meringues are done is they will be set. And when you take one, it will separate very easily from your parchment paper. That is a sign that you know that they're baked. Now, after that, at that point, what I do, because I find my, my um, caps are still not have, they still haven't dried out completely in the uh, center. So what I do is I turn off my oven, I open the door a bit and I let them continue to like dry out. Now, depending where you live, it could like you could just do it an hour and they could be dry inside. Me, because like I said, I'm, I'm dealing with high humidity. I find I like to let them sit in there like maybe 12, 24 hours. And, you know, you're going to have to sacrifice a few of your uh, mushroom caps by opening them and see the, the how dry they are inside you know some people like them dry all the way through and really hard like crispy all the way through some people like a little bit of which i do a little kind of soft in the center so that's kind of a guideline here so go like a, about an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half and and like i said they will separate easily from the uh, parchment paper and do not open your door I mean, if you wanted to rotate, rotate at like at the really towards the last 15 minutes, you don't want to be opening your oven uh, when meringues are baking. Okay, so our meringues are done. I actually let them, once I, they baked for an hour and a half, and then that's when they released easily from the parchment, I turned the oven off, opened the door, and I actually let them s sit in the oven overnight, like about probably, well, about like it's 18 hours. And so now you can see they're nice and crisp, and they're done. So now what we need to do is we've got the caps, we've got the stems, we need to join them together. I like to use some dark chocolate because I think that, you know, meringues, obviously lots of sugar, they're very sweet. And I think a little bit of dark chocolate just kind of tempers that sweetness just a little. So you can use either a semi-sweet, you can use a bittersweet, you could even use even a milk chocolate, whatever you want. And I find you need about one ounce, uh, about 30 grams of dark chocolate. I'm using the semi-sweet today, and I just melted the, it right in the microwave, just, you know, make sure you use a microwavable bowl. And 
When you melt chocolate in the microwave, be very careful. Do it in short blasts, like maybe 15 seconds. Take it out, give it a good stir, another 10 seconds. Do it gradually and really stir it in between because it all of a sudden it just seems to melt like that. If you don't have a microwave, then you could do it a saucepan of simmering water and just have a heat proof bowl and, and melt it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little cap. Now I'd like to make a little hole in the bottom here because then I find you, have, you know how I said they have a little tip there you can kind of stick that in there. So I'm going to just I take a toothpick you could take just the end of a sharp knife and make like a little hole try and make it in the center. You see so I can Makes it a little easier to for the the stem to attach to the cap. See, I got a little hole there. And now I'm just taking a little, you can just take like even the back of a spoon and put a little bit of chocolate. How much chocolate you want? Like for this one, I have like that. If you don't eat, you cannot even put that much if you don't want to. You could cover the whole bottom. If you wanted to, you could just take that, dip it in, and put it right in there if you don't want. But of course, I like chocolate, so I want to use a little more than that. So I'm just going to... And don't worry if it's not a perfect circle here. I think that's good enough. And then I'm going to take my little... A little bit... Still got a little bit of a tip there. And just put a little chocolate in there and then put it into the hole and kind of move it around so it sticks like that but of course we need to let that chocolate dry so what I do is just take my mushroom and then just kind of put it up like that and then you need to let them um, dry like that now once they're dry or you could do it beforehand maybe I should have you, you if you want your mushroom cap your cap you can just have them pure white or if you want, sometimes what I like to do is take a little bit of cocoa powder with a brush and like kind of dirty up the, <laughs> the tops a little and just kind of like so. I mean, if you want to do that, you can do that or not. So, and, the, and then I'm just carry on like that. So, um, I'm going to let that dry. So I'm going to try one of these that I made yesterday and take that oh nice and crisp on the outside and kind of eat them and they just because it's just sugar and it just kind of melts on your tongue and then i like the little bit of chocolate to offset that sweetness so uh you can put meringue mushrooms in a little basket like that or in a little in a uh, party bag and give it as gifts. People think they are so cool. Or if you were serving them, like you, you had a dessert tray, you could have them because they are cool. And of course, these are traditionally used to decorate the Yule log, which we do have a go to the Joy Bacon website and we do have a recipe and a video for a yule log if you want to do that and decorate with meringue mushrooms. So try them. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.